Hey what's up everybody so welcome back to the part number two series so in this video I'm going to explain that how we can add the contact listing so you see here on the home screen we have only display the uh, listing of contacts so with the help of add contact so we will create here a form which will create and save the data inside the database and uh, we can display it on the home screen so first we will create the API in Laravel and then we will work with the Axios which is the HTTP library and save the database and save the result inside the database as well as show the listing inside the home screen so that's what we are going to do in this part to the first section so let's jump in and get started here so you see are already open up my two projects the first project is where my Vue.js is configured and in the second part of the project where you see I have my server running and the PHP artisan serve and make sure your Laravel project should be running and uh, the first you see we have shown the very basic contact listing here so right after that I'm gonna create my API where we can add the contact and save it inside the database and test it with the help of Postman so make sure you already have your Postman open and let's jump in and write our very first API of this part number two so right after the contacts method I'm gonna write another method with the name of public function and let's give it the name of the uh, save contact make sure spelling should be fine save contact and let's pass here the request and the dollar request all right so I also need to define my routes uh, so I need to go to my api.php and define here the route for my post request for my save contact so let's gonna paste it out here and let's give it the name of save underscore contact and same here for my method name I need to change that to be save contact make sure it should be camel case just to make the difference for the route and the method name right so I already defined that method over here and make sure it should be the post request not should be the uh, get right because we are saving the data inside our database so it should be a post request so right inside that I'm not gonna create here a contact equal to new contact I initialize the contact here and right after that I need to define my fields for this so dollar contact name we have a name field inside our database so if you see your database already I already open up man and you see here we have name email designation and the contact number so these are the commonly four fields that we are gonna save so let's write up here so dollar request and here I just pass simply name all I need just copy that all and paste it four times so we have four fields next we have the email and uh, right after that we have the designation all right just 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 paste it out there and the last we have is our contact number so I'm gonna simply pass up here and we have to save the data so simply pass dollar contact save right so we need to also show the response coming from the JSON so all I need is just simply return response JSON and I need to pass here two things here so the first thing that I'm gonna pass is the message that it's it's gonna display as if everything works well so just simply pass here contact created successfully alright so the second thing is that I need to pass here code which means 200 which 200 is the status code which means that the response is absolutely okay successfully submitted so we are only passing these two things now the next thing that is I'm gonna test with the help of postman you can open up any tool to um, test your API but postman is more likely to be good so let's write your um, your URL which should be uh, slash API slash save underscore contact and it should be the post request make sure you also pass the headers here so let me pass the content type for the application slash JSON so let's choose that one and all I need is to go to my body and select raw from here so first add those parentheses and inside that I'm gonna define a key value pair JSON is always a key value pair so the first is the key so I'm going to define here name and let's pass here test and put comma and let's write here email I'm going to type here anything test at the rate gmail.com just to test this out next we have our designation actually I need to 
yeah so next we have designation make sure you spell right everything and designation let's write here it and the last thing that is the contact number and i'm going to type here anything so let's type here nine nine all right so we pass all those four fields inside our body raw and if i just try to send the request and you see here down here the message display as the contact created successfully and with a code status code of 200 right so that's how you can save the data now in order to test this out as you can see inside my full stack now if i just try to refresh this because the data is coming from the server and you see now we have able to list the data inside there so now we have created our api so in the next section i'm going to create here a form with the help of that form we are going to save the data inside our database and we can show that data inside our home listing so let's jump in and work with that section all right guys so welcome back here so in the last section you see that we have created the api in laravel and save the data inside the database and show the result as well so now with the help of the view we are able to create the front end with the help of that we have to create a very basic form here as you can see add underscore contact that's where we can gonna create the form and that save the data inside the database so let's jump and get started here make sure you follow all the steps previously the themes that we use is the it's a boot swatch so you can follow that or you can find any any basic tutorial or you can follow any template where you can create the form and start working with it right so let's go inside our code directory and inside source components we have defined add contact.view so i'm going to remove everything from the temp uh, from the, inside the template and uh, we have to create our on so let's figure it out so the first thing that i'm going to do is make sure you have defined your container and inside container we are going to create the row and let's let's give it that name of call md-6 right and basically these are the basic grids make sure you know all the basics about it so next is that we have to create here a form tag and inside the form tag let's remove this action and inside form tag i'm going to create here a field set so again this uh, this is all html and you can follow that all form you can either get that from the boot swatch so i'm going to show you real quick that all you need to do is to go to your boot swatch and free themes all there and let's choose that one we have used pulse let's click on here and you see there is a documentation the forms that you needed as well as i need one more thing for the js file however it's just for that reason that it's gonna be uh once i just try to uh, reduce the screen size you see here this toggle doesn't work so i'm gonna grab my js from here as well so let's go inside our chrome browser and select the js file for this it should be at the bottom of it so all i need is the uh, bootstrap.bundle.min.js file so i'm going to grab this js cdn and let's add that inside our index.html file which is inside the public folder right after the uh, div of id of app i'm going to just simply define here script of source and just paste it up here and now if i go back to my screen and this is gonna hopefully works for me all right so that's the um, basic requirement for the form and let's write and create our form so i need to go to my add contact dot view right inside the field set i'm going to define here form dash group and inside form dash group let's define here a label and uh, i don't need any for for this so let's define the class first so it should be form dash lab label and bring some spaces so margin top four so the first label uh, keep that empty because i'm going to paste it down here so next we have our input field so input type of text we don't need any name here we don't need any id all things are on base of view and next i have to define here class of form dash control and uh, let's define the placeholder enter name all right so i'm going to grab this all and paste it three more times 
All right, so let's go to the first one. So we have our tags, enter name. So give that label of the name. Next, that label for the email and just change that placeholder to be enter email and type of email. So this should be um, enter designation. And I also need to type here the label for this enter designation. And the last one is the enter phone and also type up here enter contact number is fine right just keep that right all right so now let's go back to the browser and you see now we have our four fields inside there as well as we need some button for the for submitting the form so let's write after the div of this let's define here the button and define here class equal to BDN BDN dash primary margin top of four right so now if I go back to the browser and yes I need to display here something so let's define here submit all right so we are good to go with the form so um, now right after the export default you see here we have some things that we need to define here as the life cycle for the view explained. So we have a data method as well as you could see. Next we have our methods that we also need to define because once we submit the form we need the method to be called so we also need to define here. So inside the data I'm going to return so whenever we define data method always it return as something the objects that we need to define here. So we have our contact right next we have our name email and we have our designation and the last field that we have is the contact underscore number as well as i need to display some errors so i have to create later on once uh, for the form validation i need to define some errors as well so i need to also define this right like that and it should be in the in in the form of an array brackets right so that's all for now so once i click on this submits button it should work the method should be called and it should return us uh the method alert so right inside my form field i need to define here the something which is known as prevent default so i need to stop my method i need to submit the form so submits at the rate submit dot prevent so let's define that here so dot prevent and let's define here save contact right so i need to grab this one and also i need to define no validate so it's so there should be no any custom validation that html provided so it's going to stop us from here Right, so right after inside the methods, I need to create that save contact method. So let's go inside your methods and define that. So right here, I need to define the errors as well. So this dot errors equal to empty by default. And I need to have some validation. So if this dot contact dot name, and remember this contact is coming from here right so this dot contact dot name if it doesn't if this dot contact dot name is uh, empty that means that if it's false let's push the error inside the array so this dot errors dot push so let's define some validation for this contact name which is name is required and i also need to paste it all three more times so write that so change that to this dot contact dot email and change that tax to be email same case for here designation and change that to designation is required and the fourth one is the contact number is required and as well as change that to be contact underscore number all right so these are all the va basic validations um, I also need to define right on the form to show those validation messages. 
So right after my call dash MD dash six, I need to create here an alert message, alert, alert dash danger. So like with the help of Emmet, I'm gonna simply define that alert, alert dash danger. And I also have to define some margin from the top. Let's bring up here empty dash four. And I also need to check the condition. I need to apply here V dash if directive and it will check that if there is some length for the error. So V dash if errors dot length. So if there's some exists some errors, it's, so it's going to display right up here. So I also need to define some ULs and inside UL I need to define here a class for margin bottom zero. And right after that, I need to display the message. Actually, I forget to bring that UL in and the double quote, right? And inside here, I need to create here a list item. Let's define that. Not the label actually, um, allies. And inside allies, I need to define the v-4 directive. So v-4, let's loop the data. And we need to pass here the errors and the index. And uh, also define the in errors. Define the key index. All right. So let's pass here the message for the error if it exists. All right, so whenever we are uh, working with the forms in Vue.js, so make sure we have to define here v-mod, uh, v-model directive, which can access the text values. So for this, let's define here v-model equal to something. So so how it's this this is how it can get the value from the form. So let's define here contact dot name, right? And similar case for the email, let's define v-model equal to equal to contact dot email oops actually uh, yeah all right so next we have the designation so v dash model equal to contact dot designation so last we have is a v dash model equal to contact dot contact number all right so that's all the four fields we have and uh, if i go down underneath that we already define all the validations which are fine and let's test this out right if i go back to the form and click on the submit button and you see here now we are able to see the results but unable to find the error message so let me go on top of it and just check if everything is fine. So we have v-4, we show the errors. That should be errors, not errors, right? So just remove this from here. And if I go back to my Chrome browser and you see here the name is required, right? So if I just try to um, access it, let's uh, define here name here. So right here, Sarah. Sarah at the rate gmail.com. Now, if I just try to submit that, and now you see the two fields are disappeared. And same for the designation, let's ID and some contact number. And if I just try to submit that, and now you see everything has been removed successfully, right? So the next step that we am going to follow is for my uh, Exios, where we are able to access the API URL with the help of HTTP library and save the data inside the database. So let's jump and get this happen in the next section. All right, guys, so welcome back here. And in this section, we are able to submit the form and save the database uh, data inside the database. So let's go back into your add contact dot view and uh, right down here, right after the validations that we defined. So those validations are all the checks that are applied that if that is empty, so we are going to push the data inside the array and display the result using the alerts that we have defined uh, with the help of Bootswatch classes, right? Next to it, we have to define here another condition that if there is no errors, like if there is no error, so I need to define this dot errors dot length. So this piece of code will be work once everything works fine. So just to check this out, define here alert, something like that. And let's go back to the browser and write something here. 
So if I just try to submit the form and you see here the alert works, right? So that's what we want. So right inside our condition after if that everything works, we have to construct it up something which is known as form data. So this will help us to construct the set of keys value pair, right? So define here form data equal to new form data, all right? So and next to it, we have to append the data. So how I'm gonna do here with that form data dot append and let's define here name first. So name and uh, next we have to access the this dot contact dot name and make sure that it should um, paste it. Um, actually, I need to ident my code. So beautifier file the HTML. This is the extension I have installed. Beautifier. All you need once you install the beautifier extension from there, L and then press Control Shift P and click on the beautifier file and press HTML. So this is gonna ident your code, right? And this is the very, very useful um, extension. Next, we have our contact number as well. So I need to also paste it down here. So let's change those properties. So next we have our name, uh, next email, and also the designation. And this should be contact number. All right, so we append all the values. And right after that, let's define the URL, which is coming from the API. So I'm gonna to go to my Postman and just simply grab this URL from here and paste it up here. And that's all I need. And next, this should be um, URL. And I also need to check that because we are applying here Axios, so which is an HTTP library to access that URL. So I'm gonna define that Axios library right here. So import Axios from Axios, all right? And I also, plus this method should be async method. So let's define that. And right after the URL I'm gonna do here is, so await, axios dot and this should be the post request right make sure it's a form submitting let's pass here the url and the form data and then get the response so dot then i need to display here the response and this should be um, actually i need to define here so let's me console the lock to get the response so if response dot status which is coming from the server so if that response status is equal to 200 that means that the form is submitted successfully so let me pass here response dot data dot message all right so let me go back to the server uh, to my sorry about that it should be all right so now if I just try to submit something let's type here John Doe John gmail.com something contact number now if I just press submits and you see here it shows that contact created some successfully and the values are still there inside my form and if I just try to check my listing from here to my home screen, and there we are. So now you see how we can save the data inside the database also. The data is just definitely saved here and show it to our contact listing. Now, I need to do here one stuff that I want to show you. This is actually the response that is coming in. That's how we can access. So we access the response.data dot message in order to access that if you want to access the code all you need is just simply get the response dot data dot code to get the 200 right so this is basically how i have done this this all messages right how i can access those objects property all right so this is all done and i need to refresh the values as well that i have shown so this dot contact dot name make those empty and same case for that, I need to display it four times, change that to email, 
and next we have our um, designation and the last one is the contact underscore number that's all we are and we have to catch some errors if, if we want we can also do that so this should be the if condition let's console the log error if there's some errors simply shows that too and we can also catch the errors through its so dot catch let's pass here errors and uh, this dot errors dot push so let's define your error dot response all right that's all we need and i hope everything will works good so for the last attempt i'm gonna save my data so let's let's write here alex it should be ex alex at the rate gmail.com let's define id specialist contact number now if i just try to press submit and you see here we can also show the alert like the contact created successfully and all the four values are disappeared now if i just try to submit that and you see the validation works now let's go back to the home screen and you see here we have our alex data right so that's it for the save data you see how elegant how the code is so clean that everything looks very simple and i have done with a lot of um, effort to make this quality video for you guys so please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'm going to show you in another part the next part number three is all about how we can delete the data and uh, we can work in the part number three so thank you for watching this video and guys i want to see you for the next time